Well, we've made our biggest boat purchase yet. This is a 2021 Aquila 32 Sport. It's a slight upgrade from our pontoon boat that we've had for years. It had a speedometer, a throttle, and a couple of light switches. So to say we're a little lost is a massive understatement. When we bought our home on the intercoastal waterway, uh, my wife asked if we could take our tritune down the ICW to one of our favorite places in Jekyll Island. And I gave her a quick, not with a pontoon, so the search began for something that could. We landed on a great deal in Alameda, California, where this boat had been docked since new. When I reached out to the folks who handled my boat maintenance, I was introduced to a few new phrases like marine survey, motor survey, and sea trial. When you buy a boat in this class, it's recommended that you hire a marine surveyor. This person will go through all the systems on the boat, do a hull inspection, and perform the sea trial. For all you pilots out there, this is like a pre-purchase inspection and you know that you need to do it. A sea trial is where you take the boat out and test the performance as well as all of the accessories while you're underway. This is a significant purchase for you so don't miss the opportunity to meet with the surveyor so you can go through your boat together. You might learn a few things just like I did. The motors are expensive on these things. In our case $30,000 each so hire a motor surveyor. They will schedule their inspection at the same time as the boat surveyor and we'll do the sea trial together. The motors have an electronic history and will tell you how hard the motors have been run and if there have been any historic faults, etc. The surveyor will go through the motors and check your compressions, your zincs, and optionally take oil samples. Don't skip this. Again, this is a significant purchase and not something you buy blindly. So be sure to take the opportunity to fully inspect your boat with these services. Ask questions along the way. They're working for you. If you find anything wrong during the inspections, you'll be able to negotiate repairs before your purchase is complete. Both of these people should provide you with a report after the inspection is done, usually within a week. While you're going through the boat, see what's on board. Ask what stays and what doesn't. Things like bumpers, ropes, and safety equipment. These are additional negotiating points. I hooked up with Marine Max in Jacksonville to have them represent me on the purchase. The rep was quick to answer my questions and even made a trip to join us on the survey. That said, I'll never use them again. After I made my payment, uh, my representative was nowhere to be found. He wouldn't answer voicemails, texts, nothing. So I was on my own and way over my head on this giant upgrade of a boat and a particular warranty claim that he submitted for us. The bad news is, is that Marine Max is the U.S. distributor for Aquila. So they are my only source for questions that we'll inevitably have in the next few months. For their sake, I'm hoping that my experience is rare. And that said, I've recently reached out to their Wellington group and they've been very responsive and so there's that. During my efforts to find out something about the Aquila 32, I was limited to YouTube videos on Aquila 32s that were just for sale. And it seemed like the same video on every single one. The most helpful videos were from Boat Test and Captain Steve. He's great. However, there's zero how-to or orientation videos on the Aquila 32 Sport. So for posterity purposes, I'm going to create a series of Aquila 32 Sport videos that will answer a lot of questions for people looking into what appears to be a fantastic boat or yacht or what is this thing exactly? For me, it's a boat, a nice boat. So back to the Aquila. This boat was loaded. The prior owner put everything on it except the imitation teak floors and a generator. And he added a few extra items, including an isolation transformer to cut off electric water at uh, what it's called hot marinas. And he added a super nice aft cover that set him back over three grand. He was kind enough to leave all the life preservers, bumpers, ropes, safety equipment, etc. So we really had everything that we needed. The Aquila 32 Sport is a 32 foot boat with a 12 foot 8 beam and has two Mercury Verado 300s that will launch this beast into, in our case, with fuel and seven adults, 46 mile an hour. That was impressive. It didn't feel that fast with the Isinglass up and the bow door closed and it was even comfortably warm during our sea trial in San Francisco uh, in January. It also had a Mercury joystick option that absolutely 
was a must for me, having no experience with two engines hanging off the back. That thing will make an amateur look like a pro in just a few minutes. The boat didn't have an autopilot, but the joystick gives you the next best thing. There's a button to the left that looks like a boat that will lock in your heading. You can also adjust your course by either bumping or twisting the head. A bump to the right or left gives you one degree of course change and a twist gives you 10 degrees of change. The joystick uses an electronic compass to lock onto courses. This is going to be just fine when traveling up and down the ICW and try to manage traffic. I'm not an open water guy and that's where autopilot would be more useful. The boat has a bedroom and a wet bathroom and I'm now correctly referring to it as the cabin and a head. By wet bathroom, I mean there's a toilet, sink, and sink, a sink faucet that pulls out as the shower head and the water drains out of it onto the floor. I'm six foot four and it works good for me. There's even a shower head on the starboard rear that has hot and cold water. It carries 29 gallons of fresh water and has a 15 gallon hot water heater. The water heater only works with shore power or a generator that this boat doesn't have. All you experienced boaters or RV guys, please forgive me on this next one. I now know what black and gray water is. So the gray water is ejected overboard from the shower and sink drains and the Aquila 32 has 21 gallons of pee and poop storage. For your information, that's a lot. Let's talk about the cabin. It's surprisingly roomy. Again, I'm 6'4", and the first thing I did when I saw it was get into that bed. I was certain that my feet would hang over the end, but I was wrong. Just guessing, I'd say it's the size of a full bed that's shaped a little weird. My wife and I both climbed in it and it was good, but we're snugglers, so it works out just fine. A funny thing, I was testing the outlets, specifically the shelves by the fan in the bedroom, and was disappointed when I turned on the breaker labeled outlets and nothing came on. And I found out that it only worked when I turned on the breaker that was labeled microwave. Yep, I found a microwave that fits and there will definitely be popcorn in our future. I'm sure that warming up leftovers will be handy too. The lighting on the whole boat is fantastic. I'm going to have to include a video on this. I think most of the lights can be dimmed. Nice touch, Aquila. In any event, the sea trial went well and the motors had a great history and the compressions and oil were good. After making the wire transfer to complete the sale, it was time to figure out how to get this boat from California to Virginia. That's a long way. Over 3,000 miles. This took some planning. Because of the width, there's no way you're going to haul it on your own. And yes, I did ask if there was a trailer. Stop laughing. I had some haulers recommended to me by my Marine Max salesman, and the prices were staggering. 20000 plus. I wasn't satisfied with that, so I did my own research, and I'd recommend that anybody buying something like this do the exact same thing. Don't get recommendations from folks who have no skin in the game. Every bid I got on my own was less, and they were all reputable and insured. I landed on a company called Safe Harbor Haulers. They had the best bid, and I can't imagine anyone's service being any better. Nice trucks, wonderful drivers, and they had a GPS tracking service that I'd never seen before so I could track my boat's progress all the way to my front door. The other thing you need to do, and probably before calling a transporter, is figure out who can accept your boat, because not every marina can. You need to find someone that either has a travel lift or a giant, and I do mean giant, forklift, and also room for that truck to get in and out. In my case, it was the latter. I have to mention that Top Rack Marina in Chesapeake is absolutely top notch. Phil, the owner, made it happen. So now we had a departure and destination point. Time to prepare the boat for the truck. I reached out to the local marina in Alameda and they said that they could get the boat on a truck. My transporter recommended against wrapping the boat because of the winter time. They'd seen the wraps get very brittle and break and the flapping of the wrap damage the gel coat. After doing this, it might be my choice every time. Cleaning up wasn't that bad either, so I gave the boatyard a list of things I wanted done to secure the boat, including removing the radar dome. 
They did all of that and they did a few other things from their experience that needed to be done. The haul out, the prep, and the loading cost us $1,230. That alone was less than the wrapping estimate. By the way, make sure you tell your folks to turn off the batteries as part of the prep. Six days later, our boat arrived in Chesapeake. The house batteries were completely drained and one of the motor batteries was low, but it had enough juice for a start. That was good. There were a few maintenance items I wanted to get done. I wanted the water pumps, impellers, oil, sinks, and the plugs changed. This required dropping the lower units, which had to be done on dry land. I contacted my folks over at Wright Marine who coordinated with Top Rack and they were able to meet the boat when it landed and three hours later and $377 to Top Rack, we were in the water. This is where I figured out the battery situation. <laughs> we got the boat started, but no electronics, maps, etc. I was unfamiliar with the area uh, and the boat and I was solo. I wanted to top off the tanks, so I had to move three slips over. So it was time for me to test the joystick for the very first time. I inched out enough to clear the docks and push the stick to the right. A smile ran across my face as I looked at the dock hands and the boat moved in perfect position, three slips over, and then I backed it in. It was so hard to keep the smile in as I was trying to act like I'd done this a thousand times before. And the joystick made it look just that way. It was perfect. After fueling, it was off to Wright Marine where they're going to put things back together, add a ceramic coat, and install night vision from Nightwave. I can't wait to see that. Until next time, see ya!